Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in this webinar. I'd like to talk about two topics, uh, critical materials uh, in general, and then the Critical Materials Institute uh, more specifically. And I'd like to begin uh, discussing critical materials through the use of three images, three images at the top of this title slide. Uh, various commentators have described critical materials as uh, the vitamins of modern engineered materials or, or the salt and pepper of these materials or spices that add special properties to, uh, to, to modern materials. And, and used in small quantities, these materials provide essential properties. But critical materials have a second characteristic, and that is that they are subject to supply risk. So it's the combination of providing essential properties uh, with the uh, risks associated with supply chain that makes a material critical in any particular application. That leads then to the question of, well, what to do? What should we do to uh, to assure supply chains, and, and fundamentally there are three solutions to supply chain risks. Produce more, use what we do produce more efficiently, in other words, waste less, uh, and use less uh, by developing substitute materials. I think just as important a question is how, how should we do this and, and who should should be responsible? What are roles and responsibilities for undertaking these, uh, these three types of actions? And I should say at the outset that these are my personal views. These are not the views uh, of the Department of Energy, which funds a significant portion of the work that I'm involved in. So my personal views are, first of all, uh, being a car-carrying economist, I, mean, I, I believe in, in, the, in the power of market forces. So rely largely on market forces, but recognize there are time lags in developing uh, additional supplies, reducing wastes, uh, using less. Uh, now this is not I would say a cartoon version of, of markets that we often hear in popular discussions, but rather a view of market, the power of markets that recognizes government has important functions it serves. And, and, and therefore, in terms of how and who, government initiatives should focus primarily on efforts uh, that serve to facilitate well-functioning markets. And, and I, I, I divide these into four uh, types of government activities. First of all, international trade and trade policy. When, when the source of supply chain risk is uh, are distortions to international trade, then trade policy has an important role. Uh, second, development of domestic resources. When there are opportunities for domestic resource development, facilitate, not incentivize, but rather facilitate this sort of uh, domestic resource development. Third, information and strategic analysis, really echoing the, the comments that Steve Fortier made a few moments ago, uh, and Larry Miner did as well. Uh, information and strategic analysis. Uh, many of the, the emerging uh, materials and, and elements in the periodic table that have not seen significant use in the past uh, are opaque markets. Information is scarce and it's difficult to make rational decisions whether you're in the public or private sector without information. So a third important role for government in much the same way that government uh, plays a cru crucial role uh, through its national income and product accounts. Uh, fourth and finally, research and education throughout the entire supply chain. Uh, even though the private sector carries out uh, significant research development activities, it's widely recognized that the private actors by themselves are likely to underinvest in research and education from the perspective of society as a whole. Uh, particularly in the area of basic research. And this then uh, provides the context, this first, fourth function for government, the context for the Critical Materials Institute about which I'd like to devote the rest of my presentation. 
So the Critical Materials Institute, uh, a very busy slide, so let's, let's focus attention on specific parts of this slide. The essential uh, purpose or, or, or goal of the Critical Materials Institute is to uh, innovate, to carry out technical research that will create technological options for assuring supply chains. So technologies that will allow us to produce more, uh, waste less, uh, and use less uh, of the critical materials. Uh, second point to note from this slide, the Critical Materials Institute is an, one of four Department of Energy funded energy innovation hubs. In particular, we are funded by the Advanced Manufacturing Office within the Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Office of DOE. Uh, third important thing to note about the Critical Materials Institute is that we are a consortium. Uh, we're a consortium of uh, companies, universities, and national laboratories. We are, we are led by the Ames Laboratory, affiliated with Iowa State University, one of the DOE national labs. Uh, and, and, and the idea with the consortium is that there are skills and talents and perspectives that, that, uh, that are somewhat different from industry, uh, to national labs, to universities, and we want to want to force, in some sense, these uh, different perspectives to act in ways that might not occur uh, as easily or as naturally left to our own devices. Uh, here's a slide with words that, that that says much of what I've just said. Uh, an additional piece of information, it's a five-year initiative uh, with a budget of up to $120 million in total over five years. We are in the middle of uh, the third year of operation. Uh, because we are funded by the Department of Energy, uh, we are focusing specifically on those materials that play uh, play essential roles in, in selected clean energy technologies and specifically we are concerned about the supply chains for the raw materials that are important in uh, wind turbines, in photovoltaic materials, in fluorescent and LED lighting, and in advanced vehicles. And, and in turn what that means is that we are focusing primarily uh, at the moment on certain of the rare earth elements that provide important functionality to, to, to magnets and to, to, to phosphors and lighting. Uh, and we're focusing on lithium because of its uh, essential role in at least what are now state-of-the-art lithium, uh, lithium batteries. Uh, we follow a three-pillared research strategy that, that mirrors a stra the strategy articulated in the DOE 2011 Critical Materials Strategy. It's, it's essentially the three uh, what-to-do answers that I presented at the beginning of my presentation. Uh, innovation to diversify our sources of supply, to make better use of existing supplies through recycling and reuse, and to develop substitute materials that they either do not use the, 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 the materials at risk or at least use less of them. Uh, the Critical Materials Institute has a number of goals, but at the highest level and most fundamentally, we are committed to developing at least one technology adopted by U.S. companies in each of our three major areas of research. So technology uh, to diversify and expand production, develop substances, and reduced wastes. Uh, at present, in the middle of our third year of operation, uh, we've, we have 40 invention disclosures uh, that in turn have led to 13 patent applications that in turn have led to one licensed technology, a technology that uh, involves membrane uh, solvent extraction uh, applied to rare earth elements. Uh, I have a couple of slides here that I'm, I'm not going to go through in detail. Uh, they simply uh, list our invention disclosure. I will say that all three of the, the, the areas of research, uh, process engineering for primary production, process engineering for recycling and reuse, and material science and engineering for uh, developing substitutes are represented in the uh, in our invention disclosures. So here are the first 10, uh, here are the second 10, uh, the third 10, uh, 
and the, the, the fourth uh, set of 10 invention disclosures, uh, the starting point for uh, licensing, commercializing uh, technologies. So that's a little bit about critical materials. It's a little bit about the Critical Materials Institute, uh, the Department of Energy funded Energy Innovation Hub. I would say the key storyline that I hope everyone would, would uh, remember from this presentation is, is the idea of innovation to create technological options for assuring material supply chains. And with that, I will stop. And uh, I think all three of us are happy to, to entertain questions. <laughs>